In part 2 of this tutorial, we are going to create a Quartos project, synthesize the top module, connect the design to the FPGA pins, and in the end program the DE1 SOC board and do a demonstration. The synthesis result of your Verilog code should look like this in the end. The project is going to work in the following manner. Whenever you press I push button or the I switch inputs, a counter will increment and the 7 segment display will show the total number of pulses. You will also get to see what happens if you directly use the signal coming from a mechanical switch and how can you fix all the issues coming from this. Let's create a new Quartus project, synthesize our very low code, program the FPGA and see how our circuit behaves on the board. This is the main project folder. Remember to place all your Verilog files inside the RTL folder. Now we're going to create a Quartus project in the Send folder. Click on New Project. Next. Change the working directory. Right here Project. Next. Browse the RTL files. We need to select only the design files, not the test benches. Next. Here we select our FPGA. This is the model that I use on my board. Here you don't change anything. And now finish. Click on files. Select this. Right click and set as top level entity. Now we compile the design to see that we don't have any errors. The synthesis process usually takes a while and depends on your computer architecture. The more powerful your PC or laptop is, the faster the synthesis process. Ok, so the synthesis finished successfully, but we have some warnings. Let's fix them. The first warning is related to the fact that we don't have our synopsis design constraint file. Let's create one. We go to tools and select timing analyzer. File, new SDC file. And you need to add this code. Here you declare the period of the clock, which in my case is 50 MHz. And this is the name of the clock port, which is called CLK in my case. This is the most basic structure for a Synopsis design constraint file and it will also remove all our warnings. Let's see if this happens. You write here project and press save. Close and close. Now if you look at the files, the project.sdc appears here. Let's synthesize again. Ok, now we removed all the critical warnings related to the timings. Next we need to connect our RTL design with the FPGA pins. Let's use the pin planner now. We go to assignments, pin planner. In the end, you should have something like this. For example, for my D1 SOC board, the pin locations are the following. You close this, and now you need to resynthesize. After the synthesis process is done, we can see that we don't have any critical warnings left. If we look at the normal warnings, you can see that some pins are determined to be a clock, but they don't have an associated clock assignment. This is because we use the posage of I switch or I button to increment the counters. As we discussed in part 1, this is not the best practice. Let's check out now how our Verilog code translated into a digital circuit. Please open the RTL viewer. After you open it, you should see something like this. We have our three counters. Counter number 0 is incremented on the posage of I button. 
and you can see how I button is connected to the clock of the flip-flops. The Q bus is fed back to the adder and is incremented by one whenever you press the I button. The same happens for counter one and counter two, but they use I switch as a clock signal. For counter two, you can see how I switch enters directly inside the clock port. This is going to show us what happens when you put a noisy input inside the digital circuit. Counter 1 has the clock signal coming from the debouncer circuit. If you expand it, you can see how the debouncer circuit was synthesized. Let's compare it with the Verilog code. The two input flip-flops used to solve the metastability issues are over here. The clear counter signal is created over here and is doing an XOR between flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 2. Next we have our counter which is over here, here we have the increment logic and also the counter max value, which is coming over here. This comparator over here creates the counter max logic, which is fed back into this OR and it helps to clear the value of the counter. In the end we have the last flip-flop that takes the debounce value. If we compare with the top level module, we can see our inputs, which are over here, and our outputs, which are over here. Next we have the logic for the bottom pulses, which is over here. After this we have the debouncing path, which is over here and ends with OHEX1. And in the end we have the logic for the counter 2, which uses directly iSwitch as a clock. This is it. You can see how our Verilog code is easily mapped to a synthesizable circuit. Now let's program the FPGA board. Click on program device. I already did this, but I'm going to press again auto detect. As a small mention, you need to have your FPGA connected and open at this point. Press on change file and select project.sof. Select this one over here and press start. Now your FPGA is successfully configured. Let's check now how the pulse counter behaves on the development board. Here we have the push button that we are going to use. Here we have the switch for the pulses and here we have the switch used for the reset. Now reset N is zero. This means that if we press the switch or the button, nothing will happen. Let's deassert the reset. Now we push the button three times. You can see that the first seven segment display has a value of three. Let's see what happens when we press the switch now. We press the switch once and take it back. Now let's press the switch a second time and the third time. The first two seven segment displays have an equal value of 3. The third one has a value of F which is 15 and as you can see it overflowed several times. This means that the noise coming from the switch which is not debounced incremented the counter also. That's why it's very important to use debouncing techniques on your electronics project. So you can use either a Schmidt trigger as the button does or you can use a debounce module inside your FPGA as counter number one does. If you manage to do this project by yourself, please leave a photo in the comments. If you like this tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. Congratulations, you finished the Pulse Counter FPGA project. I have a challenge for you. Add the debouncing circuit for counter 2 and program your FPGA board and see how it works. If you like this tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.